Welcome, we're here at the HIMSS 2016 conference in Las Vegas, and we're excited to talk about some of the things happening in healthcare IT with Dr. Peter Tippett. Welcome. Hey, welcome, thank you. So you've been in the healthcare IT business for quite a while and you've seen quite an evolution. So tell us a little bit about your experience, what you've seen working, and what else is happening in healthcare IT. Well, I was on the PTAC committee that led to you know, the ARRA, that led to high tech, that led to meaningful use, that led to everybody spending billions and billions of dollars on implementation <laughs> and stuff. And in general, I was uh, all, you know, one of the cheerleaders behind this major transformation towards, uh, towards that. But I was, I was concerned right from the beginning, I was sort of a small descending voice, that we were all organized around putting all data in one place, all structured, mm. and, and that left out the sort of direct messaging that was already happening between clinicians and other clinicians, sure. between people in their care teams, and all that. And we needed to sort of get both sending things working digitally and fetching things digitally <laughs> working. Well, that's interesting. I've heard you talk about this before, that you know, you said sending and fetching. Sometimes they call it push or pull. Right. That seems like a common part of uh, what you're talking about. You know, what, what's holding that back from really happening? Well, you know, the, the world, of, I'm a data guy, I'm a scientist, and so, you know, the world of data and scientist people love the notion of structured data, all in one place, easily available, you can do analytics, everything, it would be great, sure. right? And I think that it's such an appealing, alluring thing that everybody you know, makes the spec more and more and more and more of that way. And then we say, well, you know, in other systems where fetch or pull is the model, there's maybe 10 or 20 discrete fields. Think of an airline scheduling system. Sure. You know, there's not that many unique elements there. But in healthcare, there's tens of thousands of unique elements. And why somebody can't take a particular pill is a subtlety. And you can't get subtleties in pick lists or in discrete data elements or whatever. But when people are doing delivering medicine, especially clinicians, it's all about the subtlety. It's all about why this medicine isn't working for that patient, or why they failed that regimen, or why their diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol is different than the other people with diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol. <laughs> Right, because people are subtly different, sure. and that's the practice of medicine that got that that, that that got the doctors so angry lately. When when you force people to do pick list medicine, they can't figure out why you know what what is exactly going on, and they feel left out. So you know, if if you can get people to both do the human thing, humans are used to sharing things. Sure. They're used to giving things. Your boss doesn't probably have access to your hard drive. Whenever they need data, they just fetch it. Instead, right. they ask you, and you say, oh, I know what you asked for, but I've got something even better that'll help you, yep. and I'll give it to you. So what we really need to do is we've really emphasized the pull and high-structured data, and we need to also emphasize the complementary push mm -hmm. and not-so-structured data. Maybe it's photographs, maybe it's dictations, maybe it's big uh, data files like you know, x-rays, okay. but to the extent that, that people can send these to each other, then we get around all the sort of issues of people wanting to, you know, people want to send things to each other sure. to get their jobs done. Well, one of the challenges with the push and, and even the pull to some extent is, is HIPAA and privacy and security. So how do we address those issues when pushing this data or pulling this data? Well, you know, it's actually easier in the push world than in the pull world. In the pull world, the, the, the panacea model is that we'll keep all the data on every patient in one place and we'll give everybody who has the right to access it the right to access just what they need the right to access. But all of a sudden there's some new person involved in the care team. How do we know whether they're the right person or not the right person? And should they get all the data or only some of the data? And that becomes a real problem. When it comes to people pushing things to each other, the one sending is saying, I want you to have this data because I know you need it. And so they're implicitly giving permission, sure. right? And furthermore, when you get into the pushing world, this is a lot better, easier to, to engage patients. You could send sure. something theoretically to a patient and copy their other doctor or their other nurse practitioner. And the patient could say, yeah, I want this person to have it. The patient can waive HIPAA rights. That doesn't mean you don't do the security and privacy. What it means is that the harder aspects like the BAA and other things can be taken care of by the patient just saying, yeah, I want my other doctor to get this data, <laughs> right? And if the patient's in the middle of the communication, at least as part of a permission cycle, mm -hmm. that works. Sure. So it turns out to be easier. Hmm. 
So, I mean, I, HIPAA is one challenge, I think, to making this a reality. But there, you know, are there other challenges, or, or is it really just a matter of people having the will and deciding to go forward and, and put in the effort and make it happen? There's a, there's a whole range of challenges for getting anything to change in healthcare. Right? <laughs> That's true. You know, the, this whole notion of digital health started probably before HIPAA came along, but the P in HIPAA is portability, it's not privacy. Sure. Right? It was, HIPAA was, was making privacy and security in order to allow for digital portability. Right? And after that came, you know, we got RIOs and HIEs, sure. and then we got meaningful use and, and all that. And all of these are attempts to get people to share data and keep it digital, right? Perfect. Uh, and, and it really isn't working out so well, right? <laughs> we spend billions and billions of dollars, and, and people feel less connected than before. So I think if, you know, a company like Data Motion is organized around enabling all of that, let's not worry about HIPAA, Data Motion will take care of that. Let's not worry about integration into the EMR, Data Motion will take care of that. Let's not worry about figuring out which doctor you're sending it to, we've got the directories, we'll take care of that. Let's not worry about whether they've got anything installed or not. If they've got something installed, it'll work. If they don't, it'll work, right? Nice. So if you have a universal system that can get a message and keep it HIPAA compliant, keep it safe, secure, and all the rest, and you can know the sender, know the, uh, the recipient, and understand and keep all that, that together, and keep the directories and the patients organized, all of that has to happen. Sure. But if, if that works, and you know that's one of the reasons I'm with Data Motion is to make that that stuff work, then all of a sudden we've made it a lot simpler for everybody to just get their jobs done, and and also be compatible with all the systems that are already deployed. It seems like finding the right partner is the key because the overwhelmed. Uh, you know, CIO or other technology managers, they just need the right partner to handle a lot of the logistics because they're still dealing with all these other challenges. Well, and a lot of the other issues are things like file size. Most systems that can push data, like to other systems that use this direct protocol, are limited by email. Well, that's like 10 meg, right? <laughs> well, you know, in the in the uh, in the data motion system, there's no no practical limit to how big the files are. You can send MRIs, you can send giant files because there's not an inherent limitation that email limits on things. You, you, know, you need to solve the identity problem, you need to yeah. solve the file size problem, you need to solve the HIPAA and compliance and, and messaging problem, yeah. you need to solve the permissions problems. But, yeah. but you know, to the extent that somebody else does that job for you and you can just plug in and the, the protocols are all standard and yeah. easy. Make and their life easy. That's the idea, <laughs> yep. Thanks. Thank you.